students today we will be discussing about a topic which is most commonly asked for your short notes the topic will be residual ridge resorption residual ridge resorption is usually called as rrr okay so under this topic today we will be discussing the various contents we will have a introduction we will be discussing the pathology we will be discussing the pathophysiology the pathogenesis the epidemiology etiology the consequences of rrr and the treatment and the prevention of this coming to the introduction what is residual ridge resorption according to gpt 8 the definition of residual ridge resorption is is the portion of alveolar ridge and its soft tissue covering which remains following the removal or loss of teeth so it's a very specific and clear definition what the gpt has mentioned once the teeth are removed what is left back that is the ridge and the soft tissue which is covering on top of that is called as your residual alveolar ridge the rate of reduction in the size of the residual ridge is maximum in the first 3 to 6 months and then it gradually tapers off now when we mention it is maximum of re residual ridge resorption in first 3 to 6 months we will come to its significance when we talk about the consequences so this is the maxillary alveolar ridge after extraction post extraction and healing so this is the maxillary rrr and this will be the mandibular residual alveolar ridge the bone resorption activity continues throughout life at a slower rate resulting in removal of a large amount of the jaw structure this unique phenomenon is described as your rrr to see process so this is not ideally a pathology it is actually a physiologic process but excessively it is tagged as a pathology so this is how the healing is in the initial stages this is right after extraction you can see the sockets fresh sockets in the bone once it starts healing there is bone deposition which starts and there is bone which is starting to fill inside the socket there is slight amount of bone resorption from the buccal aspect giving to loss of the buccal wall and then this is the healed alveolar site so this is the process of residual ridge resorption come on coming to the pathology of rrr atwood's classification was given and atwood classified the types of ridges into six types that is order 1 to order 6 order 1 is pre extraction that is before just before the loss of teeth pre extraction this is your order 1 with the teeth that is a order 1 order 2 is post extraction immediately after the loss of teeth that is immediate post extraction where you have a fresh extraction socket this is your fresh extraction socket and this will be your order 2 order 3 is a well rounded and high arch this is your order 3 where it is high and it is a well rounded residual ridge then what happens is when the resorption starts happening at a faster rate you have a much more knife edge sort of a ridge knife edge is something which is sharp and pointed uh, rather than being a well rounded so this will be a well rounded ridge whereas this will be a knife edge ridge then you have order 5 which is low and well rounded now in this it is the not the width but the height is compromised okay so you have a low and well rounded something like this coming to order 6 this is after your low and well rounded now it forms a depression can you see this this depression is seen here now from this stage it is moving to this depression is happening here so that is called as a depressed or order 6 ridge again let me once again revise the classification atwood's classification this is your order 1 which is post extraction pre extraction i'm sorry this is your order 2 which is post extraction or immediately after extraction order 3 is high well rounded high and well rounded order 4 is knife edge the height is not compromised only the width is compromised it is knife edged in order 5 it is low well rounded the height is compromised but the width is intact so it is low well rounded and in order 6 it is both are lost where the height and the width are lost so you have a depression like formation which is formed here coming to the pathophysiology of rrr 
RRR is a localized pathologic loss of bone that is not built back by simply removing the causative factors. Now, when we talk about the etiology, we will be discussing the various causative factors which enhances or triggers excessive RRR. Now, the main issue with this pro issue uh, problem of RRR is that once the causative factor is removed, the RRR does not stop. That is, ridge resorption factors do not stop. The physiologic process of internal bone remodeling goes on even in the presence of pathologic external osteoclastic activity. Amongst this, we will also have to mention something called as the Enlos V principle. You all know the bone formation technology, which is based on the Wolf's technique. Then we also have to mention about the Enlos V principle. The mechanism of reduction of the mandibular residual ridge actually represents a modified version of the Enlos V principle, which shows external resorption accompanied by endosteal deposition. In the maxilla, the re resorption is upward and inward. So, you have upward and inward, which means the height is reducing and also the width from the buccal aspect is going to re reduce. This becomes progressively smaller because of the direction and inclination of the roots of the teeth and the alveolar process. So, maxilla after your tooth extraction or after the residual, uh, after the residual ridge resorption starts, what happens is it starts to look smaller because when you lose bone from the outward, that is from the outer to the inner, you are losing out of the buccal bone. So, it starts looking smaller. Whereas the straight opposite is going to happen for your mandible. In the mandible, it inclines outward and becomes progressively wider. So, the resorption happens from the inner aspect. So, it starts looking more wider and it is starting towards the outward process. So, it inclines outward and becomes progressively wider as the age of edentulousness increases. So, this is what I mentioned about the V principle. Okay. There are some Basically, clinical facts have proved there are some points which cannot be changed regarding your residual ridge resorption. That is, RRR is not inevitable. Two things. You cannot stop the process of RRR and you cannot stop it from happening either. Okay, And the rate of RRR varies from person to person depending on the systemic condition, depending on the pre-extraction condition, depending on any other features like if it was a carious tooth or if it was a periodontally weakened tooth, all this can vary, change your rate of RRR. The rate of resorption is greater than the rate of formation in some patients, especially patients who take some sort of medications and things like that. There is a lot of change in the rate of resorption. Now, because of all these reasons, Although it is a physiologic process, it can be also considered into a pathologic process. Coming to the pathogenesis. So, immediately following your extraction. So, immediately following your extraction, remember the adverse classification I told. So, that is your order 2. Any sharp edges remaining are rounded off by the external osteoclastic resorption. So, when you have a post-extraction site like this, the osteoclasts come and attack here at the sharp sides okay and that is the main point where the resorption starts so now when this osteoclastic activity starts starts at the star, sharp sides that's when it leaves a high well rounded residual ridge so that's how it shifts from an order 2 into an order 3 okay as the resorption continues from the labial to the lingual aspect, labial is the buccal or the labial aspect, to the lingual aspect, the crest of the ridge becomes increasingly narrow, ultimately which becomes a knife edge ridge. So, more resorption happens from the buccal or the labial aspect, from the buccal bone. So, that is why when you see the as the bone resorption increases here, there is the width of the ridge is reduced more. So, that is why it becomes a well-rounded ridge. So, you have a well-rounded ridge like this. This let it be the labial or the buccal and this is the lingual. Okay, So, this here the osteoclastic activities are more. You have more resorption on the buccal or the lingual aspect and that shifts it to a knife edge ridge. The width reduces to form a knife edge ridge. So, there it is becoming an order 4. Now, as again the process is continuing, the knife edge becomes shorter. Now, this knife edge is becoming shorter in height. So, here it becomes a short, well 
rounded ridge that is your order 5 okay that is a low well rounded or a shorter well rounded 